say this. Uh, Super League are saying that they've, uh, they've got a lot of signatures, and that's true. I mean, they've probably got almost as many signatures as the Australian Rugby League has, but it's, uh, it's a lot different from having signatures and having players. The fact is that of uh, 48 players that I've looked at have signed contracts with the Super League, uh, 13 of them uh, come off contract at the conclusion of 1995, another 24 in 1996, another 8 in 1997. So really, I, I just don't know where they're going to get the players from. It's going to be some years before they can because, bear this in mind, all those players are contracted to their clubs from periods of two to five years. In turn, the clubs are contracted to the Australian Rugby League. Now, I'd just like to make comment on the report tonight, that, uh, or late this afternoon, that the New Zealand Rugby League and the English Rugby League had, uh, had uh, signed to, uh, to play with the Super League or be involved with the Super League. For a start, I, uh, if it's true about New Zealand, I just want to say that it's probably one of the most uh, deceitful and, uh, and uh, dishonourable acts that I've ever known, because the bloke never even picked up the phone and, uh, and advised his colleagues here in Australia or the international board that that's what he was going to do. But just before I came here tonight, two members of the New Zealand Rugby League Council phoned me and said, we don't know anything about it. We've never been consulted. So he's in fact <coughs> saying that the English Rugby League and the New Zealand Rugby League haven't signed? Well, well that's the New Zealand Rugby League. Just as I walked in tonight, I've received a fax uh, from Morris Lindsay saying, Mr Cowley has jumped the gun. The British Rugby League has denied it has already agreed to form a summer Super League. This follows the claim from Mr Cowley that, uh, that uh, they would be involved uh, in forming a, a, a European Super League. So, you know, I, I think that um, we should get all these things clarified before we start... Uh, <coughs> I, 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 to answer your question, Paul, in my view, they're going to be hard-pressed. Well, John, what's the Super League all about? Isn't it all about money, Rupert Murdoch taking over the game, putting his uh, football on pay television and then charging the public money to, of course, uh, watch that football? Isn't it all about the fact that some players have signed some contracts, just unbelievable money, uh, six, seven hundred thousand dollars They're walking around saying... It's for the better of the game, the best games, you'll see the best games on television, uh, the standard will improve. All this isn't the reason they're smiling, because they're earning six, seven hundred thousand dollars a year? No, Paul. I, I think that uh, we've always had a vision about taking the game to the world. Well, what's that, your vision uh, for the world? I mean, yeah. what about in Australia? Yeah. Well, Australia's going to be a very important part of that. And uh, the players, uh, where we sat down uh, months ago and put budgets together about... Uh, where, where uh, we want to take this game, how we're going to take this game. We put some financial models together, what we believe we could afford to pay the players, because I, I think what's happened in the past, Paul, if I, if I, if I give you an example of, uh, let's have a look at Melbourne last year, there's a game, of, a state of origin game on there. 88,000 people turn up to watch a game of football. The players get $1,000 or $3,000. I think it's something like 2% of the gate went back to the players. I think that is terribly unfair. I think the players have been short-handed uh, short change in this whole rugby league uh, fiasco over, over the last few years. That's fine, John. What about your vision? <coughs> like you're talking about taking the game global. I hear that all the time. The, wor the word that we hear from you people, whether it's Chris Johns, yourself, or anybody from the News Corp organisation, is vision. What is taking the game global going to do for these people here or those people that are watching this particular show? You tell them. It's going to give them the best possible product. Is it? So they'll get the opportunity. So you've got at the moment, let's go for it, Brisbane, Cronulla, Canberra, Canterbury, Auckland, Crushers and Western Reds on, on your books, right? Have you? Bob, can now, I can you Let me finish, right? So you're talking about the competition isn't structured the right way. Is that particular structure there okay? You don't know what our structure is. Can I don't. I've got a fair idea. Yeah, I've been sort of hammering and talking for the last can I, week. Can I make a comment there on behalf of the players as well? You just made a statement saying the Super, Super League has come in and made $600,000 contract offers to players to try and make them jump. Well, that's true. John did come in and address us and, and told us what the Super League was about. But then, after that, the Australian Rugby League have come back in and made unbelievable offers, right, of, of money. If our players were going to jump at money, they had to jump straight back to the ARL and taken the contracts with the ARL. What our players did, we sat down and looked at what News Corporation said we, what they were going to offer us. And well, what is they that? Sat down, they what sat down. Apart they sat down. Apart from that we, here, what is it? Well, let me finish, Fatty. Sure. Don't keep asking me. Uh, we were told, right, let's, we've asked our players' union to approach the Australian Rugby League on numerous occasions on things such as superannuation, trying to look after our players when we finish playing football. Things like 
if a player gets injured, clubs not being able to walk away from contracts. Like John Rebo's organisation has come to us and said, if I if I get tonight, if I walk out of this organisation here, get run over by a truck and can't play football for the next three years, the first year that I'm playing football, I'm guaranteed all of my money. The next year, I'm guaranteed 50% of my money. The year after that, any all the years I've signed for, I'm guaranteed 50% of my money. These are the sort of things that they came to us and said, this is what we want to do. We want to put a player, right, out of this organ, out of the, all the players, put them on the board of the news, news limited, limited board, and get our input back into the game. Things we've been asking for. They want to put a coach on the board, put their imp input back into it. Now, if the Australian right, League, so in three years' time, just say the Super League doesn't get off the ground, and you, what, have, what have you got then? Paul, Where are you? Paul, Super League's here to stay. There's, there's no doubt about that. John, here you, to stay. What about the legal aspects, well, 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 John? Well, hang on. Paul, you've on, asked me sure. about. Uh, just excuse me. You've asked me about a vision. You've asked me, and everyone keeps interrupting. Can I finish? It's the first time I've interrupted. Can, 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 can we? Can we? Can we sure. have a crack at this? The vision is about taking the taking the game to the rest of the world. It's about giving the patrons and the fans a better deal than what they've had in the past. What a load of crap. It's all about pay television, John. It's all about lining people's pockets with money. And for you to sit here and say anything different is just an absolute fuck. Chris, I heard what you said, OK? Now, Ian Roberts, well, let me finish. 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 Let me it's not doing? my organisation. No, I'm not your organisation. You, you haven't signed anyone here on the panel. Well, let's, let's you haven't let's, signed anyone here. Well, listen to it instead of screaming. The ARL, right? Their organisation. Who's, who's in with the ARL? Like Kerry Packer's put $28 million. Oh, that's what I read in the newspaper. I'm not sure if he's put more in, but that's what it said in the newspaper. $28 million wouldn't pay for Manly and Canberra players what they've been, what the ARL have been offering them. So, uh, <laughs> no, no, hang on a sec. You mean, Chris, well, okay, Chris, you're losing the debate. You you're talking about, turf fairy, you're talking about Manly players. Ian Roberts uh, came to an agreement and will be with Manly for three more years. He stands to earn $1 million from Super League, or Star League as it was previously named, for not lacing on a boot. Just so they can put his picture on the back page of the Telegraph Mirror and the Courier Mail. Right, but that's not true. That is not true. Jeez, it sounds sincere, John, but are you going to do more better than that to convince me? Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. You've just got to get your facts straight. You're just throwing figures willy-nilly. Well, so, so, no, Ian no, Roberts no, didn't no, $900,000 from no, you people for no, three years. No. So, for three years? Yeah. $330,000 a year. Net. Ian Roberts, net. 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 Play, net. he'd have net. to play football with us. What, you, what, what are you talking about, nine hundred? Well, I spoke to Ian Roberts last night. Ian Roberts came in, he was just astounded by the offer, right, of $900,000 net for three years, and he's got a three-year contract with Manly to go. And Ian Roberts told me that, and I'll tell you, if you want to get Ian Roberts on a, on a phone over in the Centre Hotel in Auckland, I'll tell you what, he'd back that up. Well, hey, 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 just, uh, I'm just saying, I'm telling you, John, exactly what Ian Roberts told me. Right. right. Can we get... All right. Let's, let's, That's all I'm repeating. It was if this is what now. Ian said, if this is what Ian said... Ian Roberts has a commitment to the Manly Football Club, which we believe he should honour. And at no mm -hmm. stage have we asked a player to breach a contract. No, I'm not saying that. Well, no, well, we're talking about offering a person to go with your organisation, right, whether it, it's obviously not to play because he's tied with us for three years. Yeah. So it might be after that. What, is he going to, you know... Yeah, he can, is he entitled to earn a living? So you're not saying that you didn't offer that? Right. Huh? We offered him a contract after okay, his commitment to Manly fine. finished. Okay, is that all right? Can we yeah, just that's, fine. that's fine. Yeah, can John, we get, can we get saying back to Mike? Please, please. Well, John, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Well, well, I'd just like to answer the, 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 really okay, like the, the first question. We're 20 minutes into the program. I haven't answered the first question yet about the vision of the game. The people out there deserve better than what they've got in the past. We want to take the game, lift the profile of the game, give people a state of origin type game every week. We believe, as I said earlier, we've put, we've put our financial models together. We've taken, we've taken the, the game and we've, we've, we've sold it to uh, other channels or asked other channels what they believe is a fair price for the TV rights, and we might just stay on that. The TV rights, as I understand at the moment, have paid something like uh, $12 million. First time it's gone around just to get a, an evaluation of our product of rugby league taking it to the world, it came back at $24.5 million. These guys are centre stage. Don't they deserve to get a better deal than what they have in the past? With, with the, the concept we, we, we propose, a 10-team concept, so the people out there are going to get better stadiums to go and watch football at. They're going to have 
better class of football. We're not going to have 30 nil results. So they can go there, watch the best football every, every second week, still have their state of origin, still have their test match football. The whole thing improves. Everyone out here is a winner. Well, John, you are going to have 30 nil score lines. That was shown by the fact sure. that North and Manly came up with that score line only a couple of weeks ago. One thing you can't do in sport is get that evenness every weekend. I just want to know, John, All we where are you going to get your players? I understand that. Look, I, and look I'm, I'm a fan of the Super League concept, and I think that's where the ARL have been heading as well. Um, I think the best of the best is a, is, a, is a great way to go. But what I want to know, you're talking about a state of origin contest every week. Where are you going to get the players? <laughs> The players are fine. As I said, we've committed to this. This thing is not going to go away. How many players it's not have you going signed, to go John? away. Can you tell us how many players we have We have in excess of 100 players, and well in excess of 100 players. But, Reeves, if say the Super, say the Super League was going to start 1996, you've got... But your time is starting in 96. Well, I'm just saying. Like yeah. we've, we've heard statements from people within your organisation well, to saying well, that... Mr Murdoch said it today. All right, so we've got Brisbane, Cronulla. Well, let's go to the top. Let's go Brisbane, Canberra, Canterbury, right? Then we go Auckland, Crushers, Western Reds, Cronulla. What sort of competitions are they oh, going to There'll be other franchises. Yeah, sure, but where are you going to get the players from? <laughs> Bob, we've got the players. All right, OK. Well, if you've got the players, you must John, be here doing it. just John, ask about... a question Sorry, you, Fatty? Yes, Ken. Can, can I just ask this? John, I know you've got a lot of signatures, but you haven't actually got the players because what I'm saying to you is that those players, Ian Roberts, for example, that we were just talking about a moment ago, he's signed for three years to another club. Mm. Now, he can't play for you for, the, for at least three years. Now, there's plenty of players in that actual situation. So where are they going to come from? So I think Chris is probably in the same position. I wonder, Chris, whether you think you get a chance to play Super League. Well, as you said, like, I'm contracted for 1996, and yeah. I have to fulfil my obligations to the ARL, which I, sure. I will, and that's what I have to do. But... If it comes in in 1997, I'll play it. I just have to sit back and see what's going to happen. All right, I'll tell you what, Dill, we're going to. This has been good fun. You like it? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take yeah, a break right now. Time. Reeves and Chris are hanging around. The cops are more stick. And after this, we'll be back with more of the footy show. Um, you know, the guys that have signed, um, you know, believe in the Super League. No, I'm happy. I'm. Uh, League is here to stay. I want to play. Can you explain to us. Uh, there's, a, of course, a court case coming up on May the 5th. Can you explain to us the legalities of this whole thing, Super League versus the ARL? Yeah, well, in terms of the court case, it's a battle over the loyalty contracts, but loyalty is an emotive word. It's really a contract situation. And it, whereas you can set a, a contract aside quite easily between a player and a club, you can't set a contract between a club and the league aside very easily. I think the ARL will win that round because these were big boys entering a contract with their eyes open. And I'd be putting my money on the ARL in that round. So, Chris, it's a corporation against a corporation as opposed to an individual employee against an employer. An uneducated footballer, given a standard form agreement, can easily go to an industrial court and get it set aside if it disadvantages him. But where big corporations with lawyers get together and sign an agreement, and the spirit of the agreement's clear, it's very hard to defeat it. Chris, just without seeing the Super League or Star League contracts as they were then known, offering a player a cash incentive and then saying you've got two hours to sign it. I mean, we've heard the word duress used. Would that be, without being specific, would that sound like duress to you as a lawyer? Yeah, the money's not enough. A court will look at all aspects, and they'll even go back and rewrite a contract. But it's, it's, it's a difficult situation mm. as far as that young bloke's concerned. If you buy a house and you pay $200,000 for it, sure. you get a lawyer and it takes you a month. When a man comes in and puts a form under your face, hands you money, that's easy to set aside. Well, John, legally, where, where did, do you know where you stand legally? <laughs> Well, obviously, we're not going to offer contracts if we don't, if we don't think they're legal and binding. So, but, well, Rick, what about the concept of offering them the contract and well, then saying you've got two hours to yeah, sign it? Right. Well, you're saying we had two hours to sign it. Well, it's it. been... I mean, the players have admitted that. Players have admitted right. that, that in Perth last Friday night they had that opportunity. Is that true right. or not? All you do, if you don't like the contract and mm -hmm. you're not happy with the, the cash inducement, mm -hmm. as you call it, you walk away. No one had them in a headlock. But did you if give the, them two hours to sign? I mean, is that true or not? If a player didn't sign, he hops up off the chair and opens the door and walks out. But did you say to them, you've got two hours to come no, back? No. You, you didn't. I've not to any player. I haven't. I've did, signed... Did anyone from New Zealand to do that? Hey, that you know? Right. Yeah. I've signed probably 70, 75 players. Mm. And I must say, it's been a, a fantastic experience for me just talking to the players and going through the concept and... To them, they've been so excited. John, I'm not it. casting aspersions on you. I know how you d deal in business, but I'm talking about other people who 
We were at, at Birdswood Casino last Friday night saying to players, if you sign this by 2 o'clock, tomorrow morning there'll be 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 or 50,000 in it for you. That's not the way you conduct business. I'm asking right. you it is the way your organisation or other members of your organisation conduct business. Definitely not. Okay. Can, can, can yes, I just ask one question? I think Mr Murphy made a, a very, very valid point when he said it's difficult. It's difficult to break the agreement between the clubs and, and the league. Now, I asked the question a few moments ago, which I didn't get the answer to. You were probably interrupted, but I said, if, if you don't win this case, I mean, use coloration of uh, going to contest uh, th these, uh, th these contracts with the clubs. Now, if you're unsuccessful in that, and it appears quite likely you would, because here's a very eminent uh, legal man has said that you're going to be hard-pressed to do so, I keep asking you, where are you going to get the players from? You can't get them if, 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 the, uh, if the contracts are held to be valid and, you, and, and those players are, uh, are contracted to the clubs. Just Ken, tell me where you're going to get them from. That's what I Ken, can't understand. We're sitting here getting a view from someone who uh, is employed by your organisation, Chris, who uh, does work for your organisation. Well, he's got the he's got no, he's got that is no, incorrect, right. correct, mate. I'm under contract to right. Channel 7. Right. Chris, I'm owned by right. no one. Chris. Unlike yourself, I'm not owned by Rupert Murdoch. Right. You're, you've come. They're not going right, to put gold in my pocket. They don't work Chris, for Mr. Packer either. All right, Chris. I, that that statement wasn't correct, from my point of view. You're owned. Yeah. What I'm you saying are is, through your Chris. Pocket. Chris. <laughs> no, I'm not. You are talking through your no. pocket. You're no, shaking the life out of this very institution called Rugby League. You're shaking the life out of it so that Mr Murdoch, an American citizen, can take profits back there that we put back into the game to help kids. Chris, we'll just go through something here, eh? From, from your point of view, you give me an opinion. You're entitled to an opinion. We have another opinion. So we believe we're right. We're going to take that as far as we have to. As I keep saying, Super League's not going to go, go away. We talk about development. This, this game and where we're taking this game is about grassroots stuff also. It's not just top end. We want to, we want to develop the juniors. If, if I could just give you an example of what I've done in the past and been involved with the company in the past with the Brisbane Broncos, that uh, we have a huge development program. And part of this has been a passion from, uh, from uh, Ken Cowley. He said we must put something back into the game. Oh, you're talking just... about businessmen making Chris, profits. Chris, you're going to milk, milk a valuable Chris. public thing that provides the young people. Chris, yeah. John, let's be fair, right? John, you've taken away the traditions. I mean, the traditions of young people. <laughs> well, how are the kids, how are the kids going to aspire to play for Australia now? What's well, taken away from them now? We believe we all have the opportunity for players that come on, come, become involved with our organisation to play for their country, to play for their state, and we'll have an enormous competition there. But what are you going to play for? Well, Everyone who plays for Australia now plays for the Ashes series. What are you going to play for now? That's the most important thing in rugby league. <clears throat> Hey, Look, it's going to be the same. Australia's going to play England. Australia's going to play. Australia's oh, going to oh, play oh, New Zealand. It's going to be back on Randall every week. week. Well, hang on, hang on, hang so. on. We, we, hey, uh, did you read this? Every, everybody, everybody here. Did you read that tonight? But, uh, go on, well, I'll well, say it again. The British Rugby League has denied it has already agreed to even form a summer Super League. Well, let's try I mean, and there it is. There's the facts. It's yeah, John, let him have a say and get some positives out of it. Now, you must admit that the easy thing if you're a businessman to do would be get the ARL to run the Rugby League and you people can have your profits from pay television. Surely you must appreciate that in, in a business sense it would be much easier to get the ARL to contra control the game and the infrastructure and the junior structure, surely. Right, right. they've told us they don't want us involved. That's, that's, we came through the front you, I mean, you've been that's calling people lackeys through I, the week, I, mate. I mean, there's, no, I mean, no, hang on, we've had to sign a five-year loyalty agreement. If I walked down the road and spoke to anyone from News Limited with my previous company, I was threatened with expulsion. My company oh, was threatened with ex John, expulsion look, I, I from the league. I don't like interrupting, but I must take you to task there. That's not right, mate. Now, look. What we did say to the clubs was that we didn't think that it was right that you should be talking to News Corporation about a Super League proposal. What we were saying is that that Super League proposal should have come to us. Now, Mr Cowley did say that if there were, go there were going to be any proposals, and I use his words, they would be through the front door of the Australian oh. Rugby League. Now, that hasn't happened. We made no objection at all. I, in fact, I knew you were talking to News Corporation and I made the statement there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You're entitled. 
you're entitled to go and talk why, to them why, why, if they're your sponsor. But you're certainly not well, entitled on, to be on, talking to them about leaving a... our organisation and John, going forming a rebel. Just one. before you get well, to that's my, that's my, back to my point. <clears throat> just finish that. Back, back, to, back to my point, the five-year loyalty agreement, they were, clubs had to come in and please explain if they had discussions about a Super League. You're going to, you're going to expel them out of the, co out of, out of the competition. No, Can I go back to the development question I was asked sure, five yeah. minutes ago? You <laughs> haven't answered me the question on where yes, you get the players yet. I still don't know where you get the players. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look, let's forget that. Look, I think one of the saddest things that have happened with all this Super League, and we see evidence of it tonight, are the friendships, some of them 20, 30 years long, that, that have gone out the back door here. We were just on the subject of conciliation. We've got people here who can answer that. Do you guys see any chance down the track of some conciliation in this? We said from day one that uh, we would like to have come in here, and the olive branch was always there. We wanted to talk. If we could, if we could be of assistance to each other, where we could use our expertise and the expertise of the league, we didn't have a problem with that. John, your intention right from the start, your intention right from the start is to force the hand of the Australian Rugby League to come into your hands and the hands of Rupert Murdoch. The stormtrooping uh, talent, talent uh, recruitment exercise that, that News Corporation took on last week, the methods of your negotiation, the way you went about it, I've been extremely heavily involved in negotiations on behalf of the Australian Rugby League this week. We have had more than a dozen uh, players come to our offices and loads more t phone us on telephones to tell us of the manner in which these negotiations took place. This is not about football, it's about money. It's about you people getting out in the marketplace to gather as much numbers as possible to force the hand of the Australian Rugby League to join you in what it is you have proposed for pay TV. The thing that exaggerates that for me is in the last couple of days in the mad scurry to get the numbers up some of the signings your people have made bear no resemblance to the, to the methodology of getting together a super league signing 32 year old footballers who were thinking of giving the game away to a hundred and eighty and two hundred thousand and two hundred thousand dollar contracts for 1998 and 1999 <laughs> poor old Les Davidson came in to me he said is this for real and I said, mate, oh, it's just a Christmas present. What he said, about he said I, don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand what this is all about. We had one chief executive ring me today, and I don't want to embarrass the player because he has been a great player for a long time, Steve Edmed. <laughs> <laughs> he said that I was going to offer Steve Edmed $40,000 maybe to have one more season next year. Steve Edmed just signed a, an agreement with the Super League for a, hunt, for a million dollars for three years. I mean, I don't see where that is getting together a talented Super League competition with the concept that you have. That, I just that, say just that, that in that's the a, last week, lie. excuse me, excuse me, tell truth, excuse me. Ex I'm telling you what Mr. Barnes told me today. Now, excuse me. I have been heavily involved in negotiations for the past week on behalf of the ARL. We have received tremendous support. We have signed players from the age of 15 years of age through to the internationals of great standing in this game. We have a competition. <laughs> and we have a basis for a competition. Now, Ricky Stewart, when he signed his contract last Saturday morning, told me that the person he negotiated with, he said to the, the negotiator, the Australian Rugby League are not going to take this lying down, and the negotiator says, we want them to run the game. And they are his exact words. There you go, John. I have never seen more, I have never seen, <laughs> I have never seen more greed uh, I've seen enough greed and enough treachery in the last two weeks in this game to last me a lifetime. Here, here. Prompt. Right. Thank you. Right. But, but Phil, Phil, you'd have to agree that is from both sides. That is what money creates, Chris. And that, that's what this that, is about. Yeah. This is about money. And that's what I'm saying. Let's take the money right out of it. Let's, let's bring it all back <laughs> If the in. money was right out of it, no, no one would be considering a super league. We're, exactly. we're, we're all sitting here talking about a super league. Fellas, just we've got to wind it up there. I'd like to thank you all for coming on. It's been a good debate. Especially I'd like to thank well, Ken, Bob, uh, John and Chris, of course, from the Super League, and uh, Phil and Chris Murphy. Thanks a lot. Uh, just the, the last word. Does the public want a super league? No! Let's go to a break. More on the footy show after this. Here. Yeah. Asleep, you've been worrying, tossing and turning. Um, just tell us the reasons why it's all got to you. Oh, well, basically it started uh, a Sunday night with uh, the phone call straight after the, the game. But, uh, mate, continually through, it's just been a, a battle to, to make sure the Newcastle Knights stay together. And as a team, we decided that's the thing we wanted to do. Practically, it's nearly impossible, but uh, we tried our best. 
and basically, uh, you know, the, uh, the News Limited uh, Corporation have been in town for the last two or three days, and uh, the ARL come up on, uh, on Tuesday night and spoke to us. And it's just been an uphill battle, and uh, from players, from key players signing to the ARL, and basically now to the point there, the Newcastle Knights are all with the ARL, apart from uh, about two or three. We've uh, showed our alliance, and uh, we're very happy. Well, that's good news for Newcastle, of course. Uh, Chief, were you ever tempted to leave the ARL and, and go to the Super League? Certainly, on, on Monday morning, I, you know, I, uh, I went to the uh, News Limited and I heard their offer, and it was, you know, it was very good. And Could it you is... tell us just what sort of figures they're talking? Mate, no, no, I can't, but uh, as far yeah. as... As far as the, uh, the concept's concerned, it, you know, it was mind-blowing. Uh, but in the light of day, I, if I sign up with News Limited, I still don't know where I'm going to be playing, who I'm playing for, and th there's so many unanswered questions, you know, it, it didn't do me any good. But I still believe today that they, they never had any intention of running the, the league itself. They, have no, they don't have the ability or the infrastructure to do it. They were waiting to buy all the players and get the votes, and if they got all the players, they were going to then go to the league and say, well, you, you haven't got enough players, and maybe they'd come over and then they'd have to run it. They had no intention of ever doing that themselves. Cool. So they haven't got the players at the moment. So basically, you know, they've got to look over to uh, overseas to maybe get some more teams. Well, Chief, you spoke of the team loyalty up there in Newcastle. And I guess the fact that you've been put across as the figurehead, you're the highest profile Newcastle player, I, I would imagine, test player, etc. That had to be added pressure for you as well, because everybody seemed to be looking at you almost the way that you're personifying Newcastle as a whole. Well, it, it kind of did, and, but having said that, I'll never compromise a friendship or the, the teamship and the players. I still was as objective as I could be, and uh, I, I had the facts, and basically a lot of the players didn't, because our club at that stage hadn't met with the ARL, and I think they had met with News Limited, so they only had the one side of the story. I had the facts on, on Monday morning, and I went down, and uh, you know, I organised the bus the next day and went down so they could get the, uh, the offers and, and hear both sides of the story. It did put a little bit of pressure, but when I signed on, there was only like a handful of blokes uh, that, that actually signed for the ARL. So at that particular stage, you know, I didn't know what the competition was going to be, but I knew that the ARL had the answers. They had a competition that was going to be there. And as far as Unilever is concerned, they had basically nothing. They couldn't answer a lot of questions, except they had you know, some big dreams and some big wishes. And it just, wasn't, it just wasn't right. So when the Newcastle Knights got the facts and figures, they made their own mind up and we're lucky enough to stay as a team. Yeah. If we can go to Adam Richardson, Adam, your, your story's been well documented. Your manager, in fact, uh, who's with us, I think, Steve Gillis, handed a $50,000 check back to News Limited at some time over the weekend. Were you, at any stage on Friday in Perth, given a time limit on when to sign and how you were to sign the contract? Uh, not at all. Um, they were very good about it. Uh, we had an opportunity to sign, and if we did at that certain time, we got a bonus check. So, so in other words, if you sign by midnight you got at a bonus so there was some sort of uh, if, if we signed at that uh, okay. meeting we we got the bonus i should mention that's what mr rebo refuted earlier he mm. said it didn't happen exactly adam the hardest thing in, in rugby league and especially for front rowers is trying to establish yourself um that's what you'd be working on at the moment but all this stuff during the week must have must have really blew your mind yeah well you know i'm kind of surprised that i've been asked so many questions and that and um considering the caliber <laughs> of players that have signed with the rl and uh, it, it, I'm just trying to concentrate on playing this weekend, and now I'm, I'm, I've been excited by what's happened in the last week. If the Cronulla Club are out of the league, have you got any preference of the, of the type of club that you'd like to go to? No, not at all, mate. Um, <laughs> One with the most money, would that be it, mate? Well, you know, that'd help, but um, no, I haven't really thought about it. If, if it does happen, I will cross that bridge when I come, when I come to it. Well, Brad, you're probably, without no disrespect to any of the other players that haven't gone across the highest profile player that has not joined News Limited. Your age, I thought, would have been an enormous attraction apart from your ability to News Limited. How hard have they chased you and why haven't you been tempted across? Um, I, was, um, I spoke to News Limited just by the phone and I was uh, meant to have a meeting shortly after actually I saw some of the IRL, so the meeting didn't occur. So I didn't actually find out uh, what News Limited had to offer. And, but when I heard what the IRL were offering in um, uh, how they're going to keep the competition going and they're going to start looking after some players, it just seemed too good an offer to refuse. So, um, plus a few other players I'll sign straight away. Well, Tim and Jason, we'll get an answer from both of you. How important was the rep football aspect in your decisions? It was, it was important for me. I think um, the point that you make about Brad is that him being a young player, maybe the fact that so many of their players are older players is basically because they're getting towards the end of, end of their career and and they can see the dollar signs and, and they're going to take the money and run, so to speak. What about yourself, Timmy? Yeah, it, it, that was very important. But it also was, what was important was that uh, I'm with Balmain for another two years anyway, to the end of 97, and 
and I'm, I'm with the ARL anyway there. So, you know, I, hopefully I want to represent through the next next three years, and uh, and that was very important as well with me signing. Could, you young blokes, do you, have you thought this week? Gee, I know Lotto's on Monday and Thursday nights. It's been on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mornings, afternoons, night. I mean, can you believe the money that's been banded around? There's, there's so many, there's so many um, uncertainties about about the terms with News Limited. There's there's money being offered with, from News Limited. There's money being offered from the ARL. Mm -hmm. And for mine, there's so much stability with the ARL. They have a competition. Right, you got um, you're always going to be there. If we sign with the ARL, we stay loyal to them. We're always going to be able to play rugby league, no matter what happens. Sure. Well, um, in the audience, just before, sorry, mate. Um, finish. You're right. Well, the, the way I see it at the moment. That, they want to start a Super League. They've got half the good players with the ARL, half the good players with the Super League. Neither one's going to have the competition that they want it to do. So, sure. in some way, they're going to have to get back together. If they want to take it to pay TV, they, mm. they haven't got the players to do that. In the audience, we happen to have uh, two of the players' managers um, who look after probably oh, 50, 60 per cent of all the players in the game today, Steve Gillis and Wayne Beavis. Th just tell us, are players worth six and seven hundred thousand dollars a season? Steve? Oh, there's no way in the world, Fatty. I, I, I think. Uh... As, as the boys are saying, they're winning the lottery. There's no doubt the biggest winners out of all of this are the players. They're, they're going to make a mozza. And, and managers. And, and you. And the managers. <laughs> I've no never seen you in a suit before, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I, parked way, to, I, I parked next to Steve's por Porsche when I drove up. He got it yesterday, I think. But anyway, you, you know, they, they're going to make a mozza, and good luck to them because uh, yeah. they're the guys that play the game. Let me just say this too, Paul, but it's got to the stage now where uh, we've got players getting a little bit greedy. They're getting offers from one camp. They're signing contracts. Um, they're going to the other camp voluntarily, getting offers from there, and now mm. they, they, want their, they want the lot. They don't want a quarter of a million. They want half a million. If they don't want half a million, they want a million. Yeah, I want two, to be quite honest, but anyway. <laughs> what, what about, Wayne, you, you handle up the 200 players. Is that your situation as well? Well, Ray, mine's been the middle ground. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of not for or against either side, and it's, mm. it's a matter of looking after the interest of the player. We've had offers from both camps. We've sat down, we've objectively looked at what both have to offer, and the, at the end of the day, the player makes his own decision. You weren't consulted originally, but were you? The managers weren't involved when News Limited first went on these raids on Friday night and then Saturday night. Well, I would have found that difficult, Ray. I mean, somewhere in Perth, somewhere in other places, you know, you can only be in one spot at the one time. Yeah, Wait, but... Sorry, if we, look, if we look through the Rugby League week and we picked our top 100 players, mm -hmm. okay, could we get a Super League out of the top 100 players? And then if we looked into the next top 100 players, my question is, how can you have a Super League if, if you haven't got the, the, the 12 or 16 teams? Well, I'm not, I haven't been privy to the information block, but I believe that there's 10 teams with a squad of 25 which gives us 250 players. Now, I think if everyone, anyone takes an objective look at our program at the moment, and no, no disrespect to the players that are in it, yeah. you struggle a bit once you get past 150. That's Just right. quickly to wind up, have the players generally been represented well enough? I know that your guys have obviously been, but with legal representation, family representation, have they had a chance to speak to people who could make the ramifications of their decisions clear enough for them? Well, I don't think they've been able to get qualified advice. I mean, the timing. I mean, the league had to respond as quickly as the others attacked, and I think that you know, in those circumstances, people were put in an invidious position where they had to sign or walk away. Well, thanks, Wayne and Steve, for coming in. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, these four guys here: Adam, Jason, Timmy, and Brad. These are the future. They are our game. Thanks for coming in, boys. We're going to try in the last minute to get the mighty Saints home for their first who, win. Who was that, Nathan Barnes? Nathan Barnes. Yeah, like Nathan Brown, great play. Nathan Barnes is a good player too. Um, <laughs> how am I going? The death adders are attacking. Oh, oh you've had another shocker. <laughs> so to talk about some of the traditions in the game, we've got some of the greatest names that uh, we've ever seen in the game. We've got Jeff Carr, the current Australian manager, Norm Proven, Arthur Summons, and a player who's to smash all the time, Wayne Pearce. <laughs> What are you shaking your head for, Junior? You don't remember that. <laughs> you must have locked me out. I can't remember that. <laughs> we might start with, of course, um, Norman Arthur. You must be wondering what, just what the hell is going on. Um, for, the game has changed, of course, since those halcyon days 30 years ago. But can you understand just what is happening? Well, uh, Fatty, I think it's changed since I got on the plane this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I, I was a bit distressed uh, at all the news I was hearing, but having listened to some of the speakers tonight, I'm more confident than ever that the league can survive here and survive the way we would like, that is, us all players would like to see it survive and be controlled by the ARL uh, uh, in the future the way they've controlled it in the past. Terms like tradition and loyalty, they seem to have gone out the window on all this. Well, you can't 
blame the players or entirely when they're waving all this money in front of them. Uh, it's quite normal that some of them will pick it up. Uh, you can, I think, blame some of the clubs if they've signed loyalty uh, agreements. They should stick by them. Anybody that signs anything, they should stick by it and, uh, and run that contract out. But uh, I think the league is still in good shape, and I think they'll have to get back to the, um, the uh, conference table with both these parties, get together and get some sense out of it. No wonder they won 10 comps. He never stopped talking to them, did he? <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I thought we were coming down here to sign a contract, actually. And, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit disappointing just to find we're on the, uh, the footy show, but nevertheless, uh, I'm similar to Norm. I think that uh, tradition's going to go by the by, and... Uh, I think when I was young, uh, there was only one thing I wanted to do, and I think that I would speak for all these players here, is play for my country, and uh, that seems to be the thing that's going to be lost in all this. Mm. The other thing that I find difficult is to, if there's going to be two split Super Leagues, there's only a certain number of great players or good players in any era, and uh, consequently, if we have two splits, or it is split, and there's two Super Leagues, they're going to be two Mickey Mouse Super Leagues. Yeah, the two halves don't necessarily make the whole, do they? Yeah. Jeff, one thing that also I, I think is in danger of, of we're all missing out of, and you know, I think the fans are the people that really have to be looked at, is that I, I think fans follow clubs. They don't necessarily follow players. Sure, they have their favourites, but that seems to be going out the window also. Yeah, one of the things in, uh, in Sydney is that there's a great tradition of rugby league in Sydney, and uh, it appears that under the proposal of News Limited, they talked originally about bringing that down to four teams, but... The way it's looking at the moment, I think there's, they're looking at two teams. Now, there's something like four million people in Sydney, and to have all those people switch their allegiances from clubs that they've grown up with uh, right across just at one or two clubs in Sydney where you might have even one game in Sydney, I mean, uh, it, it's, it really has got our supporters and a lot of other supporters really rolled. Well, that's a good point. Just say there's ten Super League teams, which is their plan. That's five games per weekend. They're talking about having their game in Perth, Melbourne, Adelaide. That would possibly mean there'd be one game of rugby league in Sydney a weekend. Yeah, and... and uh, is, that, is that a vision? Is that taking people. the game to the yeah, people? Yeah, but Paul, that's, that's been happening for a while anyway. I mean, there, there are occasions where there's only one game over the past three seasons in the metropolitan area. Yeah. There might be one in Newcastle, Wollongong. But I, Jeff... I, sorry, sorry Jeff, 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 on the, I, I, I'm a person who thinks that perhaps there aren't enough. Put your hand up, Blocker. Well, uh, mate, I left school about 15 years ago. No, Blocker, it was 28 years ago, actually. Yeah. But the, the thing is that... You made me lose a train of thought now. Oh. That, geez, that'd be hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've managed to do it. And sixth form was the best five years of Blocker's yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> well, mate, if... if well, you if go, the go, League comes in, saying, go on. If the, Super, if the Super League comes in, I'll be back in Mullingong, Dig and Holes, mate, so I hope it don't come in. <laughs> Ray, you were saying? You finished block? Well, no, not yet, actually. We'll no, keep going. No, no go on. Yeah, OK. Nev. Hurry up, Nev. Oh, sorry, Jeff. not allowed to call you, Nev. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, blocker. Uh, Jeff, as I was about to say, um, the, the Super League is about quality games. Now, would you agree at the moment with 20 teams, as Peter mentioned earlier, there aren't enough quality players to accommodate 20 teams in the competition? Yeah, that, that, that may be correct, but the thing that uh, everyone talk, talks about quality games and close games, and, and John Rebo's made a big point of state of origin clashes every week, I think if you look, since you've seen the introduction of the 10 metre rule, I mean, if one side gets on top, no mm. matter the, what quality of the people they've got, there's every chance they're going to win by 20 or 30 points. I mean, if you want close games every week, bring back the 5 metre rule or the 3 metre rule. The, the way rugby league is played at the moment, and I think someone mentioned earlier, it was epitomised in the North vs Bandy clash. Mm. You couldn't have picked that game before they ran out on the field. And then all of a sudden, one side dominates. You had the Warriors, who looked sensational for 20 minutes against Norse, and then Norse uh, just ran away. Because yeah. if you get on top of the 10-metre rule, and the, the teams are kept apart, I don't care who's playing, the team with the football is going to run away with it. Yeah, no amount of money can buy what happened at Coggers Jubilee over last Sunday afternoon, with Brown scoring the try and the crowd, as you saw on Vision, going berserk. Yeah, it was a very emotional day, and that's the sort of thing people go... And, and people that were committed to your supporters, we had a lot of committed Canterbury supporters there, and, and the emotion was just amazing, and, and you just can't buy that. But to say that'll happen every week in any competition, I think, is ridiculous. Uh, We're trying to get to you, Junior. <laughs> Pete? I was just going to ask, what's, you know, what's the situation with the Sydney Tigers? Well, we're rock solid behind the ARL, uh, as are you know, most of the other teams. And within our ranks, there's only one player, which was mentioned tonight, Steve Edmund, that I'm aware that's um, changed allegiance and gone with the Super League. And I don't care what... Um, Chris Johns has said and what 
uh, a lot of players are saying that they're changing because of the fact there's going to be a better competition. The only reason they're changing is because of money. It's not because of conditions, because if you remember back five years, the players draft was fought tooth and nail by the players union. That was the main gripe they had with the ARL. Uh, it was thrown out in court and it's going to be the premise on which the Super League is going to be based. So if they're talking about players conditions, uh, you know, they, they've just got no idea. Uh, well, just, just to finish off, Wayne, just tell you men who love playing for Australia, uh, just tell us what that was like and, and what these players who have signed the Super League, if they haven't, will miss out on. It, it's the greatest memory of my football career, I'm sure it is hmm. for you, Paul, Peter, um, all of us that, that represent our country. And um, the, the thing that, that upsets me most about um, this concept and the whole deal is um, the lies that have been told, the friendships that have broken up, um, the fact that a rugby league is not a game that, that's the, based on just 13 players and a set of rules. It's a game that's built on a whole lot of other things, camaraderie, bonds, uh, ethics, loyalty, friendship, all those sorts of things. And, you know, that's just going by the wayside because of the mighty dollar. And that's the, you know, the thing that's very disappointing. Righto, we'll wrap it up there, I think. Uh, some good points there made by, by Wayne, Norm, uh, Arthur and Jeff. Please thank them.